playoff time. Congratulations on making the playoffs. Now it's waiver wire week. We're not worried about two weeks from now or three weeks from now. We need who's going to help you win your playoff matchup this week. We've got the takes on this episode. You don't want to miss it. Hi, this is Kyle Rudolph, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's playoff time. Oh! Hey, hey, hit him with the playoffs. Hey. What's going on? I like that Kyle Rudolph intro. He was so uh, measured in it's his excitement. Me. Just wait for tomorrow. We've got Decaf Metcalf. <laughs> <laughs> and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I tweeted. Decaf Metcalf. Yeah, and that one wasn't even Booger. I mean, that was just uh, it was, it was one time Booger. Was silent during See, the entire uh, Monday night game. They got to roll with that because that's something I would do. Right? The silent, I would silent booger? No, I, no, I'm saying the silent booger. No, <laughs> I'm saying I mess up players' names all the time, and then it right. becomes a great moment for the show. Yeah, and we, we never, get a player nickname. We could have had Decaf Metcalf. Oh, we, we've got it if we want it. Well, it's not ours. Yeah, Tessator. You're right. We did never we never set out to like nickname players. That always happened because yeah. Jared Gurr by was accident. Not well thought out. I am good. I'm good for ten to thirty tweets about Booger every Monday night because I never go into Monday night remembering what I'm going to experience. Like I think I'm going to watch Monday Night Football, but then I always get punched in the face with the booger mobile yeah we had a listener league uh member that was saying he was over at a friend's house watched the game and was just thoroughly enjoying it and then realized halfway through because he was at his friend's house his friend had the game kind of muted and so he's like oh this is why it's going well. I've, I've turned the corner have you oh, gone to the radio no i just the the, the yeah. boogerisms are just so wild you're so wacky, uh, like much not not the way he would probably want me to be enjoying his commentary. I like Kurt Warner. <laughs> Kurt Warner with the all. tweet. Yes. Yeah. Some people said for those of you that hate Booger, you can turn on Kurt. Uh, you know, Kurt is great with Kevin Harlan. Honestly, and then he just posted. He goes, "Yeah, this." <laughs> yeah, I mean, the truth is, those two guys are amazing. When I'm driving around and I can't oh, watch a game, and I'm very listening. Good. Very good. Like it doesn't get much better other than this. You know, the uh, NBC Sunday Night crew. That's my next favorite. All right, congrats to those of you now officially in your fantasy playoffs. Indeed. I had a really, uh, you know, we're in a ton of leagues, too many probably. Yep. And uh, I had a couple leagues where I missed by like uh, one by five points, one by six points. And uh, Jason, you had a clo one league that was super close. and Stupid you just missed. Phillip Rivers. Yes, where you blame one man, not the man who played him, but the man himself. If he doesn't um, throw that interception, I'm in the playoffs. I know, I know. But... I was really excited because my son, my eight-year-old, who just started loving fantasy football, I got home yesterday, and he had thought he had missed the playoffs. And I get home, and he had done all the math himself on the total points on the season and realized that if Dalvin Cook scored .1 points, which seemed pretty good, and Josh Gordon had to catch a pass for 10 yards. And I knew in my heart right then that that was Oof. not locked no. and loaded. <laughs> no, I not. knew, and he just thought he could do it, and he watched with such excitement, and Josh Gordon got one catch for 10 yards on his only target of the day, and he won, and he made the playoffs. It feels good, man. And he was so excited. The uh, photo you shared of yes. him, I mean, that kid was about to pop oh, with excitement. Oh, he was excitement. so happy. Yeah, and then I, you know, he woke up this morning and realized that our joint team had missed the listener league playoffs by five points because of Chris Carson, and he was sad again. So he knows the true spirit of fantasy, which yes. is yes. Look at your failures. It's the negative <laughs> negative things that happen. They just weigh so much heavier. But congrats to everybody who are, who did make the playoffs. We've got some very exciting weeks ahead. Couple of uh, things at the top here. We are doing a Giving Tuesday live stream today to support Stomp Out Bullying. This will be on Facebook Live at 5.30 Eastern. 
2.30 Pacific. That's facebook.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Uh, this is a charity that we partnered with, I think, two years ago on the Giving Tuesday live stream. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to doing that again. Bring your questions. Whatever you've got will be live again. Facebook.com slash thefantasyfootballers today on behalf of Stomp Out Bullying. Uh, also, congratulations to the Snoods <laughs> Megalodon winner. Many of you tweeted your uh, completion of the Megalodon episode. Chris Martin is the winner of a $100 gift card to... A.K.A. at Bug Jedi. Oh, yeah, underscore. that is his Bug handle. underscore Jedi. Thank you. Yep. Uh, shop, Sorry, Bug Jedi. <laughs> $100 to shopballers.com. The Bug Jedi, Chris Martin winning that. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers if you wanted to see my very excited, happy, playoff-bound eight-year-old. I posted the picture at Andy Holloway. Jason's at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, kind of weave our way back into the Monday Night Football uh, recaps, so to speak. It was a very exciting game. There was a lot of fantasy production. You were happy, I think, with what you got out of Russell. Uh, it wasn't, you know, top end numbers, but two touchdowns, 240 yards, both, both Wilson and cousins saved their fantasy days at the, basically the end of the game. You had a combined, uh, what is that? 38 carries between Chris Carson and Rashad Penny Carson with 23 for one Oh two and one fantastic Rashad Penny 15 for 74 and one fantastic. touchdown on the ground one in, uh, through the air. Oh, Fantastic. Fantastic. Decaf Metcalf went uh, six for 75. Oh, he was full calf. But the real heartbreak came at the expense, you know, anybody with Tyler Lockett. There were tons of people that went into Monday night needing mm. a catch. Just anything. I mean, you were better off with Josh Gordon. <sighs> Zero catches for Tyler Lockett. After the game, it, it was brought up um, by Pete Carroll that he was very sick. Eight members of the team were sick with the flu, which I think this hit New England as well. But that don't that don't get you no points. No. Acknowledging that he was sick, he's it, no Michael Jordan. Oh yeah, but it it, it does. Well, he provide. was out. He was out there, Mike. <laughs> he didn't take the game off. It does provide at least a little bit of confidence in playing him next week, knowing that. I mean, those 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 illnesses that have been going around, they're they're legit. And I, I I'm glad you brought up New England because we talked about how you know I talked about Brady looked old and the team just looked out of sorts, but they literally flew in two separate planes. I mean, that's to, how to sick avoid. they were. Yeah. The, uh, you know, separating the, the healthy from the sick. It's true. And then uh, really not a lot of fantasy production on the Minnesota side. Stephon Diggs had some drops. Didn't really give you a great game. Cousins, 276 and two is good. But then Dalvin Cook was the story. Nine for yep. 29 and a touchdown. Uh, but basically, he got hurt. There was some concern he might have, uh, you know, fractured the collarbone, something to that extent, ended up coming back out there, and he says he will definitely be ready for your fantasy playoffs in Week 14. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he, the, the player says that. I think he'll be out there. I don't. I can't imagine. I mean, 8-4, and four, him back on the bench, not getting treatment. Maybe. Important game. I I, mean, that's that's where my money's at right now. It's Monday. I, I mean, sure. you know. Uh, it's hard because it's not monday though they were also, it's also tuesday <laughs> yeah giving but, tuesday but on monday they were also in a very important game against the seattle seahawks and that, it's true like he was talking about well you know it's precautionary like they, they needed to win that game against seattle to, to be in the division race with the green bay packers you know so i i don't know you had a pro football doc talking about it like that Dalvin Cook has already in, he had injured the shoulder this in college. Our own Matthew Betts talked about his concern that it, this is a usually a multi week injury. We we need more information, but Alexander Madison skyrockets up the priority list, especially especially if you have Dalvin Cook. And if you've been listening to our show and you have Dalvin Cook and don't have Madison already, shame on you. Well. It might be one of those situations where, since the majority of our listeners do have Madison, yes, Cook being active could really, you know, he could be limited. He could be somebody that shares the load. He could right. re-injure the shoulder. So there's something to be said about, you know, just a clarity of who to start that we're going to need to get over the week with seeing whether he practices or not. I doubt he practices very much. It's probably going to come down to the weekend. 
So, anything else from the game that you guys wanted to get into? Mm, Not really. I think I mean, that's Kyle Rudolph. Kyle, Kyle Rudolph been, keeps getting it done when, when Adam Thielen's out. Kyle Rudolph gets it done. But I do think the expectation now is that Thielen will be back. He was so close to being, you know, he was a surprise inactive here. I think he'll be back next week, and Kyle Rudolph's run probably over. Do you think Rudolph will ever consider using two hands to catch the football? Why? It Why? looks so yeah. much cooler when you do it with a <laughs> one. I just ask. <laughs> News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, we'll fly through these before we get into the waivers. Uh, Adam Gase said Sam Darnold is being evaluated for bruised ribs. We'll find out whether he's, you know, he's a pretty good streaming candidate this week, so you hope he's healthy and ready to go. He didn't didn't play like a good streaming candidate last week. Good chance Daryl Williams doesn't play in week 14, running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. This is from Andy Reid. They play the Patriots. Uh, you know, when you look at the season and what's happened in Kansas City, and obviously Darwin Thompson's name is going to get brought up today, the real, the only real happy fantasy owners through the duration of the season with the backfield have been, I think there have been a couple of Damian Williams games, maybe one, yep. Le one LaShawn McCoy game. You really haven't had – you can't bank on it, right? This is not – the situation in Indianapolis where if only one or two guys are there, you just know they're going to put up a great game. You are taking some risk, and then you, you throw in the Patriots, and you've got a real issue there. So I don't think you ignore Darwin Thompson on the waiver wire, but right now I'm just hesitant to believe that one of those guys is going to give you a you know playoff winning week. Uh, Julio Jones trending upward to play for week 14. Austin Hooper returning to practice. That's great news. Uh, this was not so great news. Frank Reich, quote, hopeful T.Y. Hilton will return this season. Hmm. You know, is a fantasy owner Ugh. going to be confident playing him at all the rest of this year? No. I mean, if, if you're worried about getting back this season, that means you're not back this week, and then you're going to be in a playoff matchup where he comes back and he has really struggled to get healthy. When he's come back, he's been limited. So, no, I, I, I think T.Y. Hilton is someone I would, um, you know, I, I would assume I do not have this season. And then Chester Rogers, uh, fellow Colts wide receiver, he's missing the rest of the season with a fractured knee. Zach Pascal will be brought up once again on the waiver show. Pascal and uh, Doyle. Yep. Uh, um, the last one, and I don't, you know, we, we're going to. Well, we also have uh, T.J. Hawkinson's on the IR if you hadn't heard that. Mm, yeah. Sad. Yeah, that's true. He he's on IR. Don't play him. Just just saying. Okay. Gardner Minshew's gonna start this week. <laughs> the stash is back. I'm really sad I don't have a button I can push over here, Mike, that has the beginning of a Savage Garden song on it. Ooh, like just the Chicka Cherry Cola. Just the beginning of that song. That's what mm. we really need with Gardner back out there. But uh he's gonna start. This could be I mean you DJ Chart was great with Gardner. He was. So, Didi, not as not as great. Not well, Didi had a few games there. Once uh, they they started getting the connection later on. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it now. Get the latest news. Get ready for your playoffs. Let's get into the waivers. Put me in, coach. All right. Let's talk waivers. What do we have at the top here, Brooks? We got a mailbag question to start waivers. What is this? It's a it's for those people who are fortunate enough to get a bye week mm. going into the playoffs. Any any special tips from you guys on bye week strategy if you're one of those l lucky people out there? I, I mean, we kind of are in our uh, League One matchup. We know we're going to be uh, faced with Adam Rank in the Week 15 playoffs. Um, and so we have done everything that we can to – I mean, you just don't care about matchups this week. You care about matchups in week 15 and 16. It just allows you to pick up the defense that – And the quarterback. And the quarterback. streaming. Exactly, and, and, and just make moves based on those weeks. Pretty pretty straightforward, yep. really. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of freedom with your roster in terms of, like, holding players. You know, if you're in a three-week span, you might have to hold a quarterback, you know, to bounce back and forth. Now you know you only have two games to worry about. Maybe that frees up a roster spot for some of these cursory – you know, if Madison was out there, or Darwin Thompson, or somebody of that nature, you could always take a shot and see what you got for for the championship weeks. And be 
also be planning for the championship week. I mean, yeah. you, you want don't just be grabbing your defense for week fifteen. Grab your defense for week sixteen at the same time. And you might as well get ahead on your matchups as well. Yeah. Look at who you know the odds on favorite to that you're going to play in weeks fifteen, and then say, oh, he has no tight end for that week, or no quarterback, or you know, she or no, de you know, he he's going to pick up this defense exactly. And yeah. so you know, you can play keep away a week early. All right. Wide receiver waiver wire chatter. Let's do it. The probably own players, but worth looking at. Two guys, um, you know, if they're out there, they need to be on your roster. Robbie Anderson coming off a seven for one on one week. Has Miami this week. I mean, he's probably a one week play. Yes, he is. With Baltimore, uh, Baltimore and Pittsburgh after that, I'm not very excited to play Robbie. But this week against Miami, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, this is the playoffs. You're, you're, you, you need to win now as opposed to just grabbing a guy who will be better for three. I would rather grab a guy who's going to be awesome this week than a guy who's going to be pretty good for the next three weeks. Right. Uh, you know, and every week just – because you're, you're facing great competition. You need – Get to, a win. Worry about the week after if you have to exactly. at that point. So move on. So you can move on. Uh, Sterling Shepard has Philly, Miami, Washington over the next three weeks. He was three for 40 with a touchdown on seven targets this past week. Uh, if he's out there, if he's been dropped because of the concussion problems, you got to look his way. Yeah, I mean, Philadelphia, they, they've gotten a lot healthier the matchup this week, but we just saw Miami torch them still. Sterling Shepard's a good wide receiver. Both those guys, Anderson and Shepard, would be the top of my list. But now let's talk about guys that are very widely available that you can plug in and play in the scary playoffs. Yeah, and I, I would say that at the top of that list for me, two players, Anthony Miller and James Washington. Those would be the two that I'm the biggest fans of. Arizona is the matchup for James Washington. So hmm. that, by default, inflates his value tremendously. Coming off a of four for 111 with one touchdown, uh, Duck Hodges and James Washington have a connection. He's got the majority of the uh, work when Duck has found somebody to target, so... Do you like Washington more or do you like Anthony Miller? He's got the Thursday game. Anthony Miller, his target share is insane right now. He, he's been great. 30-something percent this past week after a couple of weeks at over 20%. Yeah, no, he, he's been a phenomenal play the last several weeks. My worry, I brought this up, I believe, yesterday, is the splits for Trubisky when he's playing a bottom 10 passing defense yeah. versus a top 10 passing defense are night and day. They are 10 points to 26 points. The last couple weeks, we've, I mean, I was, I, Trubisky grossly was my stream of the week. And, uh, it, you know, it worked out because he was facing one of those matchups. Now against Dallas, they are a top 10 passing defense. Let, I, me, let me ask you a question then based on that. Because sure. that's obviously that's Trubisky. To, uh, Trubisky makes the whole thing work. Yep. But when you look at that, are you benching Allen Robinson? I'm not benching Allen Robinson because in those tough matchups, you, you tend to see him lead the way with targets. Um, and I totally get it. And, and part of this does come down to Taylor Gabriel, right? Because it's not just the last few games that there's been good matchups, but Taylor Gabriel hasn't been there. So Anthony Miller comes into the wide receiver two and three role that, you know, when, when Allen Robinson is an open, you're looking Anthony Miller's way. Now, as of right now, Gabriel is in the concussion protocol. Um, you know, when you're comparing Anthony Miller versus James Washington, Juju Smith-Schuster could come back. I'm not sure how much that matters. I definitely prefer the matchup against Arizona to me though. There are two other guys that I have ahead of these two guys. So it said when you said you have two guys at the top of your list at wide receiver, um, I thought, ooh, maybe they're the same, but they're different. <laughs> that's, I like that's fair. I like AJ Brown at Oakland. We've seen some monstrous big games from AJ Brown, um, and this is a matchup that I think will be good for him. And the aforementioned Zach Pascal, I, you know, look, he's Chester Rogers. T.Y. Hilton, Eric Ebron, they're all gone. This is a great matchup at Tampa Bay. You know, he, he has he can disappear, but I think he has the potential to have a monstrous game. All right, Mike, who's your favorite this week? My favorite from the waiver wire if I'm picking him up to play this week, and I'm also thinking about next week, it would be A.J. Brown. He's got Oakland, like Jason said, but then he also has Houston the following week. 
championship week, he's got the Saints. I don't really like that, but you got two matchups here that are very interesting for for him. And then I wanted to bring up the name, if you're talking about a one-week player, Auden Tate, has, we've seen him be a target machine very frequently throughout the season. He has his starting quarterback back in Andy Dalton. Four for 66 on seven targets. He gets to play the Cleveland Browns. Do you think Auden Tate is worth a look? I like these other guys we're talking about more, but is Auden Tate worth a look as a wide receiver three, or are you concerned with John Ross potentially coming back? Yeah, I was going to bring up the John Ross activation. They're expecting him to be active in the lineup this week. Activate. I, uh, you know, Cleveland's defense was much worse the first half of the year. They've gotten healthier and a little bit better. So I, I'm not thrilled. I, I like Auden Tate as a player. I like the fact that Andy Dalton is there. So there are reasons to say Auden Tate could have a good week. But with John Ross coming back, you know, I, how how many ways do you want to split Andy Dalton and then <laughs> and get the leftovers? <laughs> and, and that's kind of how I feel. Sounds like you just insinuated that we should quarter. Andy Dalton, but then there's not enough. There's not. You, I I want a half. I want the at least a half chicken, the half All rotisserie. Right. If I'm going Andy Dalton, this is getting really weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're rotisseriing Andy Dalton now. Uh, Cole Beasley. You probably expected his name to be brought up, but the truth is, it, trusting Cole Beasley, it's difficult. You're going to be banking on probably low yardage totals, and if he can get a touchdown against Baltimore this week, that's a tough matchup. He has been very, very good. He has. But Baltimore, Pittsburgh, New England. It's going to be tough sledding for passing the passing game in general. Josh Allen, Cole Beasley, John Brown. I'm not expecting a lot from those three players over the remainder of the season. So Cole Beasley is not at the top of my list. I'm chasing some of the targets. That's why I like Anthony Miller, 33 over the last three weeks. I like what you brought up about Zach Pascal because they don't have a lot of options right now. He's necessary. Ten, and, ten targets this past week. And I brought up yesterday, like if you, when you look at what, what Tampa Bay is doing, right? They're, they're winning over the past couple of weeks, and they had been a juicy matchup for a combination of, of quarterback, wide receiver. Well, if you look over the last two weeks, I brought it up. Like Matt Ryan yeah. stunk, right? And then last week, Tampa Bay managed to, once again, shut down uh, the quarterback. But the wide receivers for both of those teams, so Atlanta, when Matt Ryan was behind center, you know, you still had production. They still gave up top 10 weeks of fantasy point production at the wide receiver position. The biggest fears for me around Indianapolis is just that they get into that, you know, running game, but that's what Tampa takes away. So I don't think it's a bad play when you look at 10 targets from Zach Pascal last week. Looks like an opportunity there. He would he would be my number one over A.J. Brown. I brought up the two, but I think Zach Pascal, if I'm looking for a play this week. Over James Washington, over Anthony Miller, over yes, A.J. Brown. I, the, I, I think, he, you know, if if I've got a roster and I've got Terry McLaurin on it and I'm in the playoffs. You're pivoting. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna play Zach yes. Pascal over Terry McLaurin and that it's going to feel weird, but I just care about getting the guy that scores more points this week and I think it's Pascal. Okay, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. you gotta, you got to win now. Um, and then if you need to know whether you can drop these guys, I mean, get rid of Sammy Watkins. Yes. Get rid of Brandon him. Cooks if you need a start. Yeah. T.Y. Hilton, um, yeah, let him you go. Can drop him. Terry McLaurin, Jason brought drop. him up. It stinks. He's a great player. It don't matter. And then what about Tyrell Williams after uh, last week? I would be willing to drop him. I'm still holding Tyrell. Against Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but Ryan Tannehill looks like he's a great play, and Tennessee is good, but Tyrell Williams, I, I'm, I'm not going to drop him. That's how, that's how I view it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we get to running backs, want to thank Pepsi. Yeah. Great sponsor of the show because Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, and that's what this show is about. We are celebrating our victories because that's what we get here. Whether it's a Hail Mary touchdown, a defensive stop at the goal line, or a Super Bowl win, when it's time to celebrate, it's time to crack open a Pepsi. Look, <laughs> Zach Pascal, you pick him up off of waivers, he goes hamburglar on your opponent. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that's you a, crack open that Pepsi. You're wrong, Jason. <clears throat> okay. If you pick up Pascal mm -hmm. and he goes Hamburglar against the the, te the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you you think one Pepsi's covering that job? Oh no, certainly no, not. You better be double fisted. So this is a <laughs> <laughs> oh, take a Pepsi <laughs> bath. 
and and look, you got to be watching for the his celebration because what 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 Pascal when he scores the touchdown, which he's going to do this week, probably probably have a Pepsi. He, do you think he hid one in the goalpost? <laughs> No, you're not That's allowed gonna to get do a that flag. Anymore. That's going to yeah. get a flag. Okay, too He's much. Too smart. Too smart. But listen, if if we're wrong, Pascal does not have a great game, and you need to, uh, rem- you know, you need to handle the loss. Uh huh. I recommend a Pepsi. <laughs> I recommend crack open a Pepsi. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you always be celebrating. And Foot Clan introducing the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn five percent back at Walmart Online. Games for the kids. Headphones for dad. Laptop for mom. It doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart online. You'll also earn 2% at Walmart in store, restaurants, and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart rewards card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One NA. All right, let's talk about some running back pickups. We've got the situation in Kansas City. This is wild this week, I think. At running back, or do you mean specifically with Kansas City? No, just at running back of mm-hmm. the big of Alexander Madison, Rashad Penny, Darwin Thompson. How do you possibly prioritize these three guys? Well, I mean, I I prioritize it with the team that ran the ball thirty eight times in a in a victory. You know, thirty seven points, and that's Rashad Penny. And Penny is fifty five percent owned. So, oh! I mean, it's not the best. If he's less owned, you can get him, but. Um, 15 carries, 74 yards, a touchdown, four for 33 and one through the air. And what was interesting about the rotation, uh, because I'm not, I'm not like terrified or worried for Chris Carson, but what was interesting about the rotation, it, it just seemed like these were players that were very complimentary uh, for the offense and to one another. I mean, Carson took himself off the field at the end of a 25-yard run. Give me a play here. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing for Penny. And they were willing to put both guys in around the goal line. You had a goal line carry for each player and a, a goal line touchdown for each player. And you saw Penny involved in the passing game. So, you know, confidence-wise, you know, I'd rather be flexing Rashad Penny than I would Tyler Lockett moving forward. Yeah, and speaking of playoffs, Rashad Penny plays the Rams this week. And not It's, it's an okay medium, matchup. Medium, medium match. But then Carolina – and Arizona <laughs> in 15 and 16. Like, that's that's about as good as it gets for a running back. Yeah, I mean, Carolina has just been terrible against yeah. running backs. And, of course, Arizona is Arizona, the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, he, I mean, he's at the top of the list for me. But you have a lot of interesting names, like you said. I mean, you have to bring up Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert had the largest – percentage of carries of any running back in the San Francisco backfield of the entire season in terms of, you know, this has been a committee situation. Some weeks has been Breida and Coleman. Some weeks has been, you know, three of these guys. But Mostert went out for, you know, 19 for 146 and one. He was a beast, but now they play the Saints. They play the Saints and they might get Matt Breida back. But yeah, that, but what if they don't? Let, let, let's let say you make the decision today to pick up Raheem Mostert, who's available in a lot of leagues, the majority of leagues. And Breed is not back for another week. I mean, how do you not? It's hard to find running in, backs. In that case, then he is a flex option because he's still splitting the load, and the Saints are great against running backs. I'm, I'm not thrilled to play Mostert even if Breed is out. Obviously, if Breed comes back, and now you've got Coleman, Breed, Mostert in a tough matchup. That's where I, you know, I'd rather focus on getting the player this week in an Alexander Madison or a Rashad Penny. And, you know, we need to throw Darius Geis out there, too. Only 10 carries, but he looked healthy. He looked yeah, great. I'm, and, and, yeah. I'm concerned about Geis where it's – they just – they're not giving him the touches. I mean, he was explosive. He's the best running back on the team, in my opinion. But he's splitting – talk about splitting. He's three ways with Peterson, who was on the field more, Chris Thompson, and his first game back from injury was on the field more. Like I'm, I'm you, a Darius Geis truther. You already and, have everything you need to know yeah. about Darius Geis in his three games played. First week, caught that reception, went down the sideline on his one limited, and got the touchdown, ended up at 16. The next week, against Detroit, the number one matchup for running backs, didn't get enough work. Yeah, ended up 38th on he the can, week. He can and then last week, 10 carries, but scored twice. He can so, hit the home run. That's what You have that upside of Darius Geis, the matchup with Green Bay. They're, they've kind of been all over the place when it comes to uh, defense against a running back. But 
I, I think we need to pivot back here. We of back to Darwin Thompson and Alexander Madison. Are we all agreeing that Penny is our our number one pickup of the week if he's there? Yeah, yeah. I think Penny would be my number one because he's a flex option right now. Even with and he's Chris a, Carson, and he's a handcuff. Healthy, okay, a handcuff. so Alexander Madison, Darwin Thompson. How are you prioritizing those two guys? Well, I just me personally, I'd pick up Raheem Mostert over both of those players. Wow, really? If, over Penny? No, no. Oh, he I said, said over Madison okay, okay, and Darwin. Okay, sorry. Um, on the basis of potentially needing a smash play this week for my playoffs this week, Madison, I ex I'm expecting Cook back out there. Now, if you don't, then Madison's the best play of all these guys, right? If you think Cook's going to miss a game, Madison should be far yes. and away the number one pickup for anybody. But be that that's part of the 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 risk of uh, and, of Alexander Madison of like he's he's either the top play and it'll be a top five running back this week against Detroit, or he's the backup. Well, are you gonna? Yeah, that's the question. Then, are you gonna flex Alexander Madison this week, even if Cook is out there? Because if Man. you there's two situations right. here, right? You're you're basically saying you can go after Madison, but you have to be if you need a guy this week, you have to be willing to flex him even with Cook because you're sacrificing uh, a Thompson or a Penny or a Mostert. I I am willing to flex Alexander Madison this week. You brought up Detroit, Detroit is the matchup I mean, exactly. Uh, you know you have a bunch of ways Madison could be involved. Yes. Let's say they just split. Okay, great. Madison could have a great game. Let's say that Minnesota's up by a bunch. You think they're going to run Dalvin Cook into the ground with a shoulder issue? No. No. Let's say Dalvin Cook re-aggravates the shoulder. Right. There are just there are a lot of ways where uh, Madison, if he gets ten touches, he's going to have a good game, and I think he does. So I I flex Alexander Madison this week, and I'm fine. You know, I see him and Penny. I would rather have Madison than than Darwin Thompson against the Patriots. Yeah, I think that the Chiefs, like I said at the top of the show, I think they're a bit of a trap. This week on the waiver wire, personally. Okay. And I'm a Darwin Thompson fan. Like, I think he's a very talented player. But, you know, sh you got Shady, who could be a pickup if he's out there in your league, probably owned. And then you've got Darwin. McCoy's, and you've got the Patriots in New England. I just, they're not going to do a lot. McCoy is so bizarre because you have the two weeks ago, uh, the which against the game against the Chargers, that's, that's where Damian Williams got hurt. And... McCoy came out seven carries. He did have six targets, which is pretty nice. Then this week, it's only him and, and Daryl Williams and Darwin's there, of course, but five carries in a game that Daryl Williams went out pretty early, three targets for Shady McCoy. It, He's it, just lost a step, man. I, I, I think that Reed knows that. I, I mean, obviously. I, I, I don't think they're looking to get him the ball involved a ton. Now he's been okay because he scored a touchdown, uh, you know, but – you you want more work than that. Well, and that that's where I'm saying, like, it, it, are you willing to play some of these waiver wire? Th you're right, Mike. Running back is the mess here. Are you willing to play a Penny, Madison, Geiser, Mostert over McCoy? McCoy's got the starting job. Wink, wink. Not that good, <laughs> New England. So Kansas City, the super offense, New yeah. England. That's the, you know, do you let go of McCoy to get those guys? I I, I wouldn't pivot. I, yeah, off I wouldn't of let him McCoy go and let him go. I mean, if if he was the last option and Penny was out there, sure. But I I think usually you've got another wide receiver or someone a little lower you can drop. I, I you know again I brought him up. We we went back, but I I just want to say again I am a Geist believer for this week. You know, Andy, you said we've seen all we need to know about Geis in the sense that. I just meant range of outcomes. Sure, range yeah. of outcomes. You've got range but of outcome. he has the range of outcome against Green Bay, who's sus you know susceptible on the ground to a to, to being gashed of having a big game. I mean, you look; he's had three weeks back, and in those three weeks, he's the running back six. That's that's pretty good. I mean, thirty eight being his his bad week. Obviously, two weeks ago was was not great, but. I think Geis is a guy that should be picked up, and I'd be fine playing him against Green Bay. Yeah, in the three games that he's back, just to give context to it, he's had, uh, what is it, seven carries, ten carries, and ten carries. So he hasn't passed that. You know the team wants to run the ball a lot. Um, I think those are the main options here at running back. I mean, when you look There's, down at the bottom, you're, you know, you're, you're looking at Benny Snell. I think ben, Benny Snell is still an option to me. They play, He plays Arizona, and but this is, of course – 
on the basis if, of Connor. If missing. James Connor's out, then Benny Snell is in a great situation. He 16 carries for 63 yards and a touchdown versus Cleveland. He, he's he's the primary running back now with James Connor out. Now, if Connor's healthy, that all goes out the window. But it's so similar to Madison. Looking at one week. Last three weeks, Arizona's given guy. up the number two, number four, and number ten uh, in terms of fantasy points given up to running backs. So they are, um, yeah, I think Snell deserves to be mentioned in that breath as well. So, yeah, and and he's great. The only reason he's not in the same class as Alexander Madison, well, there's two. One, he's not nearly as good as right. Alexander Madison. But two, if Cook plays, you could play Madison still. But if Connor plays, you would never put Snell in your lineup. He's only That's valuable true. if if Connor's gone. That's a hundred percent right. That's a hundred percent right. All right. Um will you drop Tevin Coleman? Oh my gosh. No. I would no. not I would not drop Tevin Coleman. Would you drop Sony Michelle? Sony Michelle mm, probably Kansas, not. Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo. Probably yeah, I don't not. think so. He, I think, he's no. he's yeah. always the option of a multi touchdown game, and with some of those matchups like Cincinnati, I'm going to hold on to him. Would you hold on to Ronald Jones? The mm. did you hear the quote? Yeah. So it, this is I had missed this quote when we were when I was furiously tilting about how did Peyton Barber take the glory of my Ronald Jones start of the week, and it was Bruce Arians in a press conference said he missed Ronald Jones missed a blitz pickup, and you don't get to play anymore when you do that. Like, that's and at the beginning of the year, why I was not in on Ronald Jones was Bruce Arian says there's I mean, you have to be able to catch the ball and you have to be able to pick up the blitz. Like if you can't do those things for Bruce Arians, then you're, you're not gonna be on the field. That this is going back to when uh when Bruce Arians was in Arizona and David Johnson was clearly the best running back on the team as a rookie. David Johnson couldn't get on the field because of those issues of blitz pickup. It's so tough. So two two weeks. There's from no now, way you can possibly trust Ronald Jones. No, none at all. I mean, I'm just looking at the schedule. Two weeks from now, you got Detroit followed by Houston. That's really good matchups. But I feel like you can cut Ronald Jones, even though he's going to start this week and be fantastic. <laughs> he might because be. He. How do you start him? How do you start? Like I feel like you could cut Peyton Barber. He just had a monster game. But are you playing Peyton Barber? Is he the starter? Like, this is a guy – I want no part of Tampa Bay. That's just – this is a user choice. I'm making the choice as a fantasy owner. I don't want to take the gamble because I feel like no matter which decision I make is going to be wrong with Tampa Bay. I would rather play all these other waiver guys over – you know, it, whoever the starter is for Tampa Bay might have a higher ceiling than a lot of these guys, but I have no idea who the starter is. When, you have no idea. They have – Ronald Jones has no idea. When your player can make one mistake – and then be benched for the rest of the game, and he's already a lower tier option. There's just no way I'm, no way I'm rolling forward with that in the playoffs. Here's a difficult question: If you are in a playoff matchup and you need to start a running back, and you have Damian Williams on your team, are you willing to let Damian go for these free agents? Because they, he plays New England, then he's got Denver and Chicago. Those are not ideal matchups. Seems like if he does come back, he's going to be part of a committee. So are, is it time to move on from Damian Williams just acknowledging you need a win this week? Yeah, I, I would be willing to cut Damian Williams and grab – if there's any of these good options out there on the waivers, yes, I would be willing to pivot to them now. Uh, all right, let's look at tight ends. What's the latest on Austin Hooper? Are fantasy owners going to be able to get him back in the lineup? He did resume practicing on Monday, and the news on him while it came out it was extremely bleak. Back when he had the injury of, you know, he's going to miss possibly four weeks. It did trend in a much more positive direction since that moment. Practicing on Monday, it is limited. There's no guarantee that he's going to play. I guess the, the, the biggest question for Austin Hooper is, <laughs> if he plays, do you put him right back in your lineup because he is yes. the number one tight end in points per game? I think you have to. I don't think you have a choice. I don't think you can count. There's one. There's one thing to identify a streaming tight end candidate. It's another thing to, you know, have any confidence that they're going to be the right one that week. And Austin Hooper has been the best, most consistent tight end when he's been out there. I imagine that they didn't throw him out there on Thursday because it was trending like it was possible. Obviously, he got ruled out pretty quick. But you get another ten days after that th Thanksgiving Day game. If he's playing, I trust that he's healthy. And so I'm going to put him back into the lineup. I agree completely. There's 
there's you know very few options that you could have pivoted to where you feel good enough about that player. And by very few, I mean basically none. The only question mark that I can think of that maybe you picked up in the absence that you would have a question of, mm, he, he should be a good option, is Gasicki, who's actually been sure. pretty good. He's the tight end six over the last five weeks, tight end six over the last three weeks. He's got a good matchup this week. He's being targeted more. Uh, obviously, that, that coincides with losing Preston Williams. Gasicki to me, looks like a real deal, so that would be like, man, do I play Austin Hooper week one or Gasicki? I don't know yet. But outside of that, you you know, I would I would be rolling Hooper. All right, last week, Dallas Goddard, 6 for 66, probably owned. Jacob Hollister led the team in targets yesterday in Seattle, 6 for 44. So not a lot of production, but he was targeted frequently, unlike Tyler Lockett and Yay. everybody but DK. That's, that's DK Metcalf. How dare you? That's phenomenal production for a tight end. Six for 44. Six for four? Probably All is. right. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, four consecutive games with a touchdown. He's another player that was streamed this past week. If you moved on from Thielen to him, you were happy. Um, what are you guys doing with the Vance McDonald situation? He gets oh, to play man. Arizona, which has normally meant very good things, but we know what this recipe is going to be. Duck is not going to be flinging it around the field. He should probably, but he probably, you know, this is a team that plays defense and runs the football and then takes their shots here and there. I mean, even with the James Washington discussion, the hard part there is, you know, three, four targets is the max that James Washington is right. going to get. But with I Vance am, McDonald, what are you doing? Because he uh, hasn't, you know, he hasn't had a game this year, really. Yeah. Never topped 40 yards. Never this whole year. I am fine playing Vance McDonald this week. Now, he's not my number one pickup. My number one pickup by a mile is Jack Doyle. I think he's a phenomenal pickup. And they're both shockingly owned in about the same amount of leagues. Um, so, you know, if you're staring down those two options, I'm certainly going the Jack Doyle route. The matchup is phenomenal. The targets are there. He's my number one waiver pickup at tight end. But Vance McDonald, I know it's insane, but it's real. At this point, you can't ignore anymore how bad, you know, it's not a joke. It's not just like, oh, Cardinals suck at tight yeah. end. <laughs> every single week, every team is beating the Cardinals with their tight end. And tight ends that that don't do Ross things. Ross Dwelly dominated them. Tyler Higby. I, we went over the yardage of Tyler Higby and his career of never, ever being a pass catcher and then puts up a hundo and a touchdown. Rhett Ellison. I mean, it it doesn't matter. They're, you, know, you can beat him. So I, I think Vance McDonald is someone that you can play. But again, not the best play. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's tough. I I'd rather play Tyler Higby again this week with Gerald Everett out than I would Vance McDonald. Uh, that that is a good option. Seattle is low key also terrible against tight end. They have been. Uh, there's a couple of teams that I really look for as as to who is, you know, what their matchups are against tight end and Arizona, Tampa Bay, the Bengals. Uh, Seattle, those are the teams that come to mind right off the top of my dome. All right, Mike, uh, thoughts on other tight end options that you're interested in? I mean, are we, have we exhausted? We, we've exhausted like the main options, but then uh, for those out there, the deeps, the super deep league with the Greg Olson concussion, I think you can consider Ian Thomas. He gets to play the Atlanta Falcons, and Thomas in that matchup where, where Olsen went out, he did have four receptions. Like He had four targets. Ian Thomas was drafted to be. That's on the basis of Olsen missing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If Greg Olsen's in, then no, I have no no plans to play Ian Thomas. But I guess it's, there's people out there in 16-team leagues who are scrambling to get a tight end, and I think Ian Thomas is, is okay. Full stream ahead. All right. Who are your very, very, very important streaming quarterback options heading into playoff week one what do you guys think i think i like yours the best but i will leave i like both of yours better than mine so i'll let you guys okay. go first i'll, very I'll leave. we'll save andy for last uh because that's who i wanted to put in but you had him first i'm going with the magic it's playoff time it's scary to do but maybe you know maybe you're the sixth seed and you're playing against the one seed or some situation where you need a big, uh, you know, you need a magical performance, and I think Fitzmagic is the guy that can get it done. He has been 
pretty darn good. He's had a lot of I mean, we talked about okay, the the Eagles secondary is getting so much better and you know, are you going to be happy with them this week? But he was the number 3 quarterback against the Eagles. He was the number 5 quarterback against Cleveland. Now he plays the Jets and the Jets are uh, already they're bad. And now they're down Jamal Adams. I looked at the weather because you know you're 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 in New York. You worry about that. And Fuckland, if you pick up Fitzmagic, look at that. Come close to the weekend. As of right now, it's about forty degrees, cloudy, no rain, no. Oh, that's you know, fine. No, no high winds. So I, I like this matchup for Fitzmagic, right? Which is Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jamal Adams looking like he will be out. That's a huge deal. I think for for Fitzpatrick, he's one the of their Jets. star players yeah. on defense. I believe I'm supposed to go last, Mike. That was, no, no, no. That's I, what I was told. No, yeah, that I, is what was told. Oh, I acquiesced. I said I like your guys' both more than mine, so I want you to go first. Okay. Uh, Ryan Tannehill at Oakland. Tannehill is playing great football. The team is playing well. I love it when something's on the line for these rosters, and, and Tennessee is competing for that final playoff spot in the AFC. Oakland is giving up the fifth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. And this past week, while it was not a good one for Ryan Tannehill in Indianapolis, he had one glaring omission from his stat line that had been there for the preceding four weeks when he finished second, 11th, fifth, and 11th at the quarterback position. And that was rushing yardage. I think he had like five or six yards rushing. He had been at the 30 to 40 yards every game. They just, you know, they didn't need it. They had the the block uh, block kick situation, scoring a touchdown. Tannehill had the late touchdown pass, but you guys brought up A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. Oakland, I believe they lost by 31 points two straight weeks, something like that. So Tennessee needs the win. Oakland enjoys giving up wins lately. They do. And uh, Tannehill, I trust him to uh, compete in this one and give you a nice, solid streaming baseline with some – with like top five, top ten upside this week. Yeah, he has massive upside. The the guy who is my streamer, it's Sam Darnold. I think you can go back to him despite the the brutal performance uh, he had this past week. Now the news of the bruised ribs, the potential bruised ribs, does give me pause, which is why I I like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Tannehill more. But if your waiver wire is it's already been mined and there's nothing there, and you have Sam Darnold, and you're thinking, ah, can I actually? Just keep playing him. I think you can. You can play him against Miami. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. All right. Defensive streamers, very important. Hopefully you were planning ahead a little bit and you've got some defenses on your roster that you really like for the week. If you're a little later to the party, we tried to pick out three defenses that were lower owned, might be out there for you that you can pick up and start this week. I'll kick it off, and that is the Minnesota Vikings defense against the Detroit Lions. And me, David Blau. Yes. Ah, ah, ah. I think Minnesota has every opportunity to just take advantage of the, you know, the same things that you saw from Mason Rudolph and Ryan Finley. Dwayne Haskins, David Blau is not going to be able to. How dare you? Even if he turns out a good performance, Did you see my path to Gullet he's day? going to make some mistakes. <laughs> it's hard to do a show. It really is. <laughs> I'm and sorry. I, I still don't really understand why he's a vampire. I don't have any idea. Just so happened. you don't either. I were, no, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy it. I'm not saying it does. It's not a distraction. I'm here for the people. It makes no sense. But, yeah, but I, it's know, very Mike. It is very. It's, it's very Minnesota. Mike. All right, Mike, you've got a defense that I like a little bit more. Go ahead. Uh, and hopefully you picked them up this past week. They were my streamer last week, and that was Green Bay because they were taking on Daniel Jones, the the, the fumble itis king himself. But now the Green Bay Packers get to play Washington, so I am very interested in that. Yes. Washington, I get it. They put up a decent performance against the Carolina Panthers. But I'm going Welcome to Lambeau, Dwayne. Yeah, look, Dwayne Haskins stinks. I, I stand by this. Yeah. Terry uh, McLaurin think, texted me that earlier. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the world <laughs> stands by that statement for the most part. You I'm, mean the 2-0 over the last – undefeated over the last two Like games? I said, yeah. I stand by my statement. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going with the Colts at Tampa Bay. Oh I want, my! I want defenses. Oh All right. my! Are you you don't like? Oh, it? I if I had a panic alarm button, I'd push it. You because you you're seeing the surging Buccaneers as the real deal. I'm or, seeing tremendous risk for your fantasy team when you go to Tampa Bay and you end up in a situation with Jameis Winston, guaranteed 300 yards probably. Let yeah, me, let me uh, ask you this, Jason. Okay, because I'm I'm fine with this. Jameis Winston, generally speaking, a turnover machine. A defense can perform against them perfectly fine, and Jameis have yep. a good fantasy day. These things can exist in the same world. But Dallas gets to play Chicago, and Dallas is available in 60% of leagues. Would you play the Cowboys against Mitchell Trubisky, or would you really go with the Colts? Um, I mean, if, if the Cowboys were there, I would go with the Cowboys over the Colts. Okay. But my point in picking the Colts here is this is, you know, Andy brought it up earlier. You want a team that really has something to play for. The Colts are – they need this win bad, and they are going up against a pick-six machine. And so, you know, you want a defense that can score touchdowns. A Winston 5,000. Oh, yeah, exactly. You want a defense <laughs> that can score touchdowns. And, yeah, Winston could put up a ton of yards. I don't think that, you know, Peyton Barber and Ronald Jones, who've been getting it done on the ground, are going to have an easy time against this great Colts rush defense. The weather right now looks good, which means, hey, Jameis, air it out. Throw deep, and let's get some picks here. Let's get some sacks, some turnovers, some fumbles. I think that the Colts can have a really I, – I, you know, they're a swing for the fences, high upside play is, is the way that I see it. Yeah, I think it's fine. I got a little shaky just watching Jameis throw it around, but he, he throws it to both teams. That's one he of his, does. his greatest attributes, or maybe worst. <laughs> uh, this segment brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart Head & Shoulders. Offense for great hair – Defense against flags. Visit Head and Shoulders Walmart Sweeps dot com, and you get a chance to win tickets to Super Bowl Fifty Four. Mm. Oh, next year! Oh, next are you, year! Are you kidding me? Oh, so are you kidding? <laughs> Super Bowl Fifty Five. Oh, that's really well. That we're, we're peaking next year. Like next year is the peak of the show, and then from then on, it's it, it's got to go down. It's got to go down, but we hope it's a slow. The slow downhill. If, yeah. If we cannot get Sammy Hagar at the halftime of the Super Bowl next performing, year. can't drive 55, then NFL, I don't know what to do with you. He doesn't have to be we've, the main we've guy. Set, we've set it up for – yeah, it's it's just one just, performance. Just bring him in. At least get whoever. him out front of the stadium or something Yeah, <laughs> for our fans. <laughs> He's just on the corner with a guitar. Oh, it's so sad. I'll someone bet, we, comes can, up I'll and bet says, we can get that to happen. <laughs> someone says Let's he's not got a, no permit. <laughs> All right. Hey, Sammy, you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be fun. All right. Again, congratulations to those of you in the playoffs. It's going to be a fun yep. few weeks. Let's go. Get some Foot Clan titles. want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, and Austin Eckler signed jersey yesterday, $61.42. At pristineauction.com, use the promo code BALLERS, Ballers. and save $5, a sultry $5 savings. Ooh. All right, that is it. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Good luck on the waivers. Yes. Oh, it's go time. May your fortunes favor your team on the waiver wire this week. Goodbye. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget that Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level. You know what? You're in the playoffs this week. Pepsi. Pepsi. You got to celebrate your victories. You win this week. Pepsi. Yes, right, Pepsi. You celebrate these victories every single time, just like the guys in the NFL do. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you, always be celebrating. Pepsi.